So, Professor Fernandez, thank you so much for speaking with me uh, again today. The last time we spoke about um, your findings about um, foreigners doing business in China. Now today you're going to discuss your survey findings about Chinese executives doing business in China. This is for 2011. Um, could you, uh, first of all, give me an idea of um, the purpose of the survey, the participants involved, etc.? Okay. Well, nice to see you again, Chairman. It's always a pleasure to share with you these, uh, these findings and these ideas. Well, yes, uh, this survey is a twin survey with the previous one that we already did a podca podcast, but this one is focused on Chinese executives. So, for instance, when we launched the survey, we only launched the Chinese version. So, you have to read Chinese, <laughs> you, otherwise you couldn't answer the, the, the survey. So, it's a very good screening there. Um, well, first of all, I, I'd like to mention the, that this is a team effort, and uh, I have to mention that uh, the, the professors that participated in this uh, uh, research were Professors Cho Dong Shen and Professor Xu Bin, and, and myself, of course, and also our research team, Chen Li Jia and Liu Jing. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the uh, alumni office because without the support, it wouldn't be impossible to do this survey. Uh, the, the, the sample, the, uh, the participants that uh, answered this survey are all alumni of CBS and also the departments in, in, in CBS, uh, EMG office and EDP. Now, if you ask for the purpose, the purpose of this is to understand the worries, the challenges, and, and the plans of Chinese organizations. Yeah, to, to know what, what, are, uh, what are the key things for them to do business in their own country or, or also abroad. Yeah? And the purpose of with the previous uh, survey, the, the challenges of foreign business in China, is to do it annually. Uh, so your second question was about uh, who are in the survey, right? Okay. Um, I think we were very successful because we got 698 uh, responses. 698. 698 responses. All of them Serbian alumni. Uh, of those uh, responses, 65% are CEO, general manager, or company owner. So it's a really top level executive. Yes, yes, very much. The rest uh, represent all the different functions in the organization: HR, operations, marketing, sales. So you, you see that the responses are very rich. They give a lot of information, and we just starting to dig into all these uh, gold mines. Yeah. Um, also, another interesting piece of information: 82% of the respondents are male. The fourth, 18% are female. So that would be another possible podcast to, to understand what are the uh, concerns and worries of uh, female Chinese executives. Ah, first of the male counterpart. Exactly. Uh, work experience is 18 years, which is uh, a lot, and as an average, they've been in the same company for nine years. I was going to mention the, the location of the companies, the organizations. 33% comes from Shanghai, which uh, represents, in a way, the, the business, the core business center of China. 18% yeah? Beijing, and then the rest are distributed all over China. I think that uh, all of the provinces are represented in this survey. Uh, regarding the activity, 56, 46% sorry, uh, are in manufacturing, 54 in service. And the type of company, and that is very uh, interesting because we have organizations that represent all the business uh, protagonists of uh, and the China economy. 28% are private companies, 20% are state-owned enterprises, 19% are shareholding companies, 17% are only foreign-owned enterprises, but remember those are Chinese executives that work in those companies. 11% are joint ventures, and the rest are Hong Kong companies, partnerships, or non-for-profit organizations. So everybody is represented in this survey. So you have a very wide cross-section. You have top-level executives from a variety of functions and industries. So in your survey, what did they say were the challenges for you? Okay. Well, let's start by the business performance in 2010. That was one of the questions we asked them. For instance, how were their sales in 2010 compared to 2009? And remember, this survey was finalized at the end of November 2010, last year. Um, basically, 37% of them, they declared that their sales grew between 3 and 20%. And now look at this. 44% declared that their sales grew more.
more than 20% in 2010 compared to 2009, which is amazing. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is that when you compare this to the same question but regarding profits, that gives you a, different, a little bit different picture. So when we ask which were the uh, 2010 profits compared to 2009, 58% of them declare positive profits, between 3 and 20% growth. 26% declare the profits grew for by more than 20%. Now, if you compare the sales growth, 44%, versus profit growth, uh, 26%, you can see that the uh, growth in sales didn't reflect the same percentage in growth in profits, which means that they grew, but they didn't make as much money uh, as you could expect. So there is growth, but just less profitability. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that, because I think that is also reflected in the rest of the survey, that might uh, due to the uh, stronger competition in the China market and also raising costs. So this high growth in sales was not 100% reflected in high growth in profits. Um, we also asked this confidence index. This is an index that we also asked to the foreigners. And the question was about uh, how confident were they in doing a successful business in 2011, and the scale was from 1 to 10, 10 being the maximum. Uh, the, the, the average was 6.7, which is optimistic, moderate optimistic, yeah. And it's a little bit lower than the foreigners. The foreigners uh, declare for the same question 7.2. So the, the Chinese are a little bit less optimistic than the, than the foreigners in doing good business in their own country. Now, when we ask the same question about five years in the future, the number goes a little bit higher to 7, but it's still lower than the foreigners that they declare 7.7. .7. Now, regarding the uh, challenges now, what are the main concerns in, uh, for doing good business and operations in China now? The top one was HR, which is exactly the same as with the foreigners. So it seems that this is across the board uh, a challenge for everybody that is doing business in China. Now, the rest of the question are, is a little bit different to the foreigners. Uh, for instance, number two is corporate governance. That doesn't appear in the list in the foreign companies. So they, this is the second highest on the list? Yes, after HR. Mm -hmm. uh, and quite high as well, yeah? 300 people chose corporate governance as the key challenge. Then you go to competition, you go uh, marketing and sales, challenges there, raising costs and government policy. Uh, when you look at the foreigners, you see that uh, number two was raising costs, that here in the Chinese appear low, uh, not low, but not as high. Chinese competitors, which is also appears in the Chinese, and then unclear and changing regulations. Yeah. So uh, there are some connections, but what is uh, special about the Chinese is that they put corporate governance uh, at the top of the list, below HR, but at the top of the list. It doesn't appear uh, in the foreigners. Now, when we ask about the future, uh, what are the main concerns about doing business in the future? The number one for them is raising labor costs. Then, slow growth. So they expect that this fantastic growth that China has had during the last uh, almost 30 years uh, cannot continue uh, for indefinitely. indefinitely. Government policy. There is a more concern about that, the intervention of the government in the economic life, and, and that we'll talk less, uh, about that later, and raising raw material costs. So for them, the key challenge in the future is cost, labor or raw material, slow growth, and then the government. Now, very low in the list is R&B appreciation. What was exactly the same for foreigners? That's interesting because uh, you, you hear this in the news as a problem, but uh, it seems that these business people, at least those that answer our survey, don't consider uh, the r and appreciation as a key factor. That threatens their success in the future. Yes. Uh, and social unrest. There was 
very low in the in the in the place, yeah. Now we also have in this uh, in this uh, section. Okay, those are the challenges. How do you respond to that? What are you doing to be successful in, uh, under those conditions? And this is very interesting because uh, the, the responses can be grouped in two. One refers to products. One refer is more internal. The product is basically innovation and upgrade. So the Chinese see this as the way to go in the future. Do more innovation, upgrade their products. And the internal is basically what we uh, listened before, yeah. Improve their HR management, improve their organizational structure, improve their corporate governance. So here it's very interesting because uh, with the foreigners, these internal aspects were not so uh, evident for them to be successful in China. They mentioned things like uh, having the right strategy, uh, competent management team, brand, flexibility, even one sheet. The Chinese don't mention those things. They focus on innovation and improve their organizations. Those are the key uh, factors. Excellent. So now if you could give me an idea about what your findings were about the business environment, specifically what is it about competition, uh, government? Okay, very good. Um, well, the competition, we asked them um, how they consider their com competitive environment in China. Now, 83% uh, of them uh, said that the competitive environment in China is very intense or intense. So it's not easy to survive in this market. Yeah? Um, and then we ask, okay, which are your main competitors? And the majority focus on Chinese private companies. Private companies. Private companies. There is what they said, those are the key competitors, the strongest competitors, the people that are becoming stronger and stronger, uh, private companies. Then, much below, almost half uh, the way in the list, mm -hmm. is the state-owned enterprises, wholly foreign-owned companies, shareholding companies, joint ventures, and low in the list, imports. But the key uh, focus for them is Chinese private companies. So, what are their concerns? They said, well, in, in this uh, area of competition, Chinese are getting stronger, which was one of the concerns that also appeared in the uh, foreign survey. Chinese are becoming better. They are learning. They are learning from the foreigners, but also they are learning from each other. They are adapting. They are adapting and they are innovating. They, they also say that foreign companies, of course, is part of the of the concerns. And then, interestingly enough, they mentioned local protectionism. Yes. Difficulty in doing business in other parts of China, oh. which is something to, that uh, is not the first time I heard that uh, China, in a way, is not like an uh, open, homogeneous market as, uh, for instance, the United States. It's more similar to the European Union, in which you still have little pockets that you have to conquer individually. Yes, yes, yeah. So they say that uh, they also mention unfair advantage of the state-owned enterprises because they have a special support from the government and uh, they consider that as unfair and uh, much lower in the list, IPR infringement. IPR, sorry, IPR was also a bit uh, low in the other survey of business executives. It doesn't seem as if IPR infringement is, is a big issue. Yeah, and it's interesting because uh, you, we always hear these stories of uh, uh, Chinese copying everything, or um, I suppose, uh, and, and I said that we have to go deeper into this uh, database, is because these people are already in China, they are in China, they are Chinese, it, it's part of the normal <laughs> business environment for them. So they already have their measure in place to protect their IPR. So they have found a solution, so it's not such a major concern. So regarding the government, the other point that you mentioned, we asked them how satisfied are you with the government service and support. And uh, basically almost half of them, 43% of them, said they are dissatisfied or very dissatisfied. Um, and again, um, I, I'm not surprised of that. I, I think that if you ask this question also in a foreign country, 
probably you get people not dissatisfied with the government and they can always do something better yeah, or, or something more. Um, we also ask questions about corruption. When we ask uh, what is your perception about uh, corruption in China, very high, 86% of them declare that it's a moderate problem or a serious problem. But when you ask the same question about what is, how uh, important is corruption for doing business in your industry, then the number goes to 48%. So here you see that there is a general perception that corruption is a problem in China. But the, when they go to their own business, how they perceive corruption in their own uh, specific uh, area of activity, only not only but 48% declare it's a problem, but of those only 40% they say that it's serious. One four. One four. Um, so the main concern about the government, uh, we ask this question, is microeconomic policies. That is one thing, yeah, that the, the, by the decisions the government takes, they are affecting um, the, the business uh, environment, yeah. Um, also,